What's going on guys? Today I want to talk to you about the photography aspects of the Fujifilm X-T3 camera. Let's check it out. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the 26.1 megapixel sensor that they put inside of this camera. Some of you may be wondering, uh, what exactly does 26.1 megapixels mean for my images? Well, while it might be true that the image quality does not change on smaller images, you'll see a drastic difference in overall detail and clarity when you're moving from something, say, like an 18 megapixel sensor to a 26.1 megapixel sensor. I myself uh, notice a gigantic difference between my Canon T5i and this Fujifilm X-T3 camera. Take a look at these pictures. If you notice the one on the left, a little bit softer and a lot of its shadowy details, uh, one on the right that was taken with the new Fujifilm, a lot more clarity, a lot more detail, and more color information. Next thing we're going to talk about is the APS-C crop sensor. What does a crop sensor mean? Now, unfortunately for you people that like to shoot full frame, this camera does not do that. Uh, excuse me. But what it does have is a 1.53 times crop. Basically all of your lenses, say for instance, the kit lens that comes with this does have a 1.53 times uh, magnification to it. For people that do a lot of indoor real estate photography, this might not be the first option that I would go with. But what I can tell you from years of shooting on a crop sensor is, honestly, it's it, it depends on the photographer. You know, you put your mind to it, use your imagination, get the shot that you wanna get. Next point I wanna talk about is the ISO range. Now by default, inside the body, it has a 200 to 12,800 ISO range. Now this is expandable to a lower 100 ISO range, all the way up to a 51,200 ISO range. I don't know many situations that I'm ever actually gonna need that, so one neat thing that I do absolutely love about this camera that my last camera did not have is the environmentally sealed body. One of the first things that I noticed when I put my hands on this camera is just how well built this thing is. It's got some weight to it. 90% metal parts. Being that I live in the southern states, we do suffer from a lot of humidity, but now I have the peace of mind that I can go out there, take this camera with me, shoot in pretty much any setting that I find, uh, and not have to worry about my camera being damaged. Lastly, the dual SD card slots. Now, it's not really something that I thought about a whole lot, but now that I'm jumping more into my photography side for my own business, um, I kind of think, you know, I need that security. Imagine being a wedding photographer, you get done with the shoot, you get home, you slap that SD card inside of your computer and wham. All of your pictures are gone. How devastating would that be? Like, would you wanna have to call that client? So with the dual SD card slots, you can have it shoot side by side, continuously, simultaneously, or you can have it as a backup reservoir. So every single picture you take, it puts two copies, one on each. Fujifilm, another plus one. Now, of course, these are a lot of advantages of the Fujifilm X-T3, at least for myself. Now, no camera is without its faults. A few things that I would like to point out, there is no built-in flash. However, to combat this, Fujifilm actually provides you with one inside the box to put on the hot shoe mount on top of the camera. Oh, what's in the box? Pro, con, that's up to you. To be dead honest, I use it, I've used flash like maybe once, if that. Second thing, the Tilt LCD Viewfinder Fujifilm. I'm not entirely sure why you keep using this. I've read your, your research, I've read what you've claimed, the reason that you're using it, but everybody's doing a full swivel LCD finder. You guys should too. Lastly, the phone app is absolutely atrocious. This video should have been out about a week ago, but using the phone app, there are so many bugs that it actually at some point froze my camera up. So what are we waiting on? Well, I just went remote on here, and now I'm just waiting for this to come back on. So, even though it's, so it's not instantaneous. Like, what about if you turn the camera off and then turn it back on? Will it that, did. And it's still not coming up? Wow. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How long has it been now? Like I feel like it's been like a minute or two and I'm just I'm just still still waiting. 
Have you turned it off and like just held it off for a minute? Like a solid minute? Like this little light's just blinking. I heard, I mean, that there's horrible complaints on the app, so I feel like it's definitely this. Fujifilm, please, for the love of God, work on that app. Thank you. Well, that about wraps up my review. I'm really, really excited about this camera. I also plan to do a full video review on the video specs and the video aspects of this camera. Along with that, maybe in between, I'll actually give you guys a full B-roll video. Just stay tuned, hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Yeah, if you got any questions on the camera, just let me know. See ya.